hello children this is a case study of uh, different topics hope it will be useful for you during the board exam come let's explore and then you can learn many things here the first chapter is about object oriented programming object oriented programming oop represents the program as a set of objects an object is an identifiable entity that has a set of attributes behavior and state attributes are individual characteristics that differentiate one object from the other the actions or operations an object can perform is called its behavior the state of an object is defined by the set of values held by its attributes objects that share the same attributes and behavior are grouped together into a class an object belonging to a particular class is known as an instance of that class classes can be derived from other classes the class that is derived from another class is called a subclass class from which it is derived is called the superclass so a paragraph or two three paragraphs will be given you'll have to just go through like that in depth you'll have to read the paragraph in depth then answer the following dash is an identifiable entity that has a set of attributes behavior and state the answer is object all the objects of the same class will have the same strain it is false because different objects will have its, its own characteristics and behavior uh dash defines the characteristics of a class the attributes define the characteristics of the class the class that is extended from the other class is called the subclass so that is all about the first chapter hope you have understood about the objects coming to the second one polymorphism is the ability of any data to be processed in more than one form the word itself indicates the meaning as poly means many and morphism means types Polymorphism is one of the most important concepts of object-oriented programming language. Polymorphism is the key power of object-oriented programming. It is so important that languages that don't support polymorphism cannot advertise themselves as object-oriented languages. Languages that possess classes but have no ability of polymorphism are called object-based languages. Thus, it is very vital for an object-oriented programming language. It is the ability of an object or reference to take many forms in different instances. It is an object-oriented programming concept that refers to the ability of a variable, function, or object to take on multiple forms. In a programming language exhibiting polymorphism, class objects belonging to the same hierarchical tree. inherited from a common parent class may have functions with the same name but with different behaviors so this is all about polymorphism whatever they had given so you also have to go through this properly okay in fact if you keep a index finger on read it will be even more uh, in depth okay so dash is the ability of any data to be processed in more than one form the answer is polymorphism What are the languages that process classes but have no ability of polymorphism? It is called as object-based languages. Okay, it is not object-oriented; it is object-based languages. Okay, the next one, polymorphism, is an object-oriented programming concept that refers to the ability of a variable, function, or object to take on multiple forms. So it can work on multiple things. So it has multiple forms. The concept through which polymorphism is exhibited in Java is method overloading. Always polymorphism promotes method overloading. So that is the end of the second topic. It is polymorphism. Hope you have understood uh, the logic here. The third one is about constructors. Come, let's see. Constructors are special methods in Java. Constructors are associated with classes. Every class has at least one constructor provided. If the user provides any constructor one or many the compiler will not provide a built-in constructor so the rule of thumb if the design of the constructor is important then the user should design as many as he needs otherwise if other tasks are more important then you may depend upon the inbuilt one like other methods constructors can also be overloaded in overloaded methods the method name is the same between methods Only differences in the parameter list. Return type is another aspect of the method. This is the value that gets returned from the method when the method or function is invoked. By the way, constructors do not have any return type, not even void. So, this is all about constructors. 
I think you would have followed the instructions whatever was given there. Which of the following is possible in constructors? Overloading is possible, parameterized constructors possible, default constructors possible. The answer is and all of these. Which of the uh, which, what is the return data type of the constructor? None, not even void was given there, right? Next one in uh, what event will the built in constructor be provided when the class has no user dependence? What is the least number of constructor every class has? It is one. So please go through this. Coming on to the next topic, shall we all go on to the next topic? Next topic is about conditional statements. Come, let's explain. When the command is issued to execute a program, the control reaches the first line of the program. It keeps executing the statement one by one unless the end of the program is reached. The movement of control from one line to another is known as flow of control. The flow of control is maintained in two ways, namely normal flow of control and conditional flow of control. The two types of conditional statements are if constructs and multiple branching statements. If construct is used to direct the control to execute either of the two blocks of statement based on the given condition. Switch case statement is used to handle multiple branching for control. Particular case will be executed when matched with the value of control variable. The default case will be executed only when the value does not match with any of the cases listed. Break statement is used at the end of each case when encountered the controls forced to move out of the switch block. Default case is executed implicitly if no case is matched in the switch block for the given value of the control variable. In case of break statement is not used at the end of a case come on the control enters into the next case for execution, this condition is said to be fall through. So now the questions. Name the movement of the control from the one line to another in the program is the flow of the control. Okay. The condition in the break statement is not used after each case statement and where the control executes in its cases, it is fall through. The case which gets executed when the value doesn't match with any of the cases listed in the switch case is the default case. Name the statement which is used to direct the control to execute either of the two blocks of the statement as switch case. Okay. So that is all about the condition okay. statement. Come, let's explore the control statements. In a program, statements may be executed sequentially, selectively, or iteratively. Every programming language provides constructs to support sequence, selection, or iteration. The sequence construct means the statements are being executed sequentially. The selection construct means the execution of statement depending upon a condition test. If a condition evaluates to true a course of action is followed otherwise another course of action is followed. This construct is also called a decision construct. The iteration construct is also called looping construct where a set of statements are repeated until a condition is satisfied. A programming language uses control statements to control the flow of execution of program based on certain conditions. There are three jump statements break, continue, return. If statement is the most simple decision making statement, it is used to decide whether a certain statement or block of statements will be executed or not. I. E. If a certain condition is true, then a block of statement is executed, otherwise, not. So, this is all about the control or the flow of the control. Uh, so, you have to execute a program in order as called as a what sequence construct. The jump statement is the return statement. Block of the statement which should be enclosed within a curly brackets. It's otherwise called as compound statement also. A set of statements are repeated until the condition is satisfied is iterative construct. So, hope you would have understood. Coming on to the next one is auto boxing and unboxing. In Java, the primitive data types like int, float, double, short, long cannot be updated inside a function. To work around this problem, wrapper classes of these data types have been created. These wrapper classes can store a number of aforementioned types as if the variable were of an object's type rather than of primitive type. The interchanging between primitive wrapper and vice versa is very easy. Simple assigning one to the other type will allow this conversion. Creating the wrapper class from primitive by assignment is known as auto boxing. Creating the primitive from wrapper class by assignment is known as unboxing. Hope you have gone through this. Coming on to the next one, which of the following is not a primitive type 
in flow char wrapper class. In float and char are the inbuilt data types. Uh, what does the name given for the conversion of the primitive data type to wrapper class is orthoboxing? Uh, where might, might it be required to portray number of objects rather than the primitive data types is all the above. Uh, between the primitive number types and the wrapper classes, which is of preference type will either name or be. So that's all about uh, the water boxing and unboxing. Next is access specifiers. Access specifiers are the terms used to specify the extent of usage of the class members. They are also termed as visibility modes, which indicates the program area under which a class member is visible or accessible. Access specifiers can be categorized as public, private, protected. By default, the access specifier is public. Class members specified as public can be used outside the visibility of the class also. Class members specified as private are used only within the scope of a class. Class members specified as protected are used in the class as private members which can only be accessed within the class but can be used to another class during inheritance. Come let's answer the question. Access specifiers are also called as visibility modes. And instant variables specified as protected can be accessed by the other class using inheritance. Named access specifier which are not the data members to be used only within the visibility of the class is private. A named access specifier the instant variable J. Uh, so here in the J is the answer is public. Hope you have understood this. Coming on the next one is a method signature. Method signature is the identification of a method. A method signature is written by using the method name along with the parameters to be passed to the method. You may invoke a function by passing different values as many times you need. Java allows you to pass the values to a function in the following two ways. One, pass by value two. Pass by reference and pass by value or values from actual parameters are copied to the formal parameters. Hence the change in the formal parameters does not reflect on the actual parameters. The actual parameters remain intact. In pass by reference, the actual parameters are shared by the formal parameters. As a result, any change made in formal parameters during function operation will reflect on the actual parameters. And the actual parameters remain intact. In pass by reference, the actual parameters are shared by the formal parameters. As a result, any change made in the formal parameters during function operation will reflect on the actual parameters. So, example will be, uh, only the signature, the name of the function with the parameters is called as a method signature. So, B is the right answer. Example of pass by value is uh, display 5 comma 6. Uh, reference of that is the actual and the formal parameter passing on primitive data type is example of pass by reference. Coming on to the next topic will be methods. In object-oriented programming, such as Java function term is often applied to the method, which is bound to the class and defines the behavior of it. In other words, a function is a piece of code which performs the operation and sometimes returns a value. A method is a function that is part of a class that can perform operations on data of this class. In the Java language, the entire program consists only of classes and functions can be described only inside them. That is why all functions in the Java language are methods. Method definition consists of a method header and a method body. In Java, all function definitions must be inside classes. To call a method function from another method of the same class, you must specify its name, and then in brackets the list of actual parameters. If the method does not require parameters, brackets are still set. The method call is used as an operation, which can be combined with other operations in the expression. When invoked, called all the statements that are a part of the method would be executed. So the questions here, functions are bound to class. Method performs operations on data. Uh, to call a method, you must specify its name within round brackets and in brackets the list of actual parameters if any. Method call can be combined with another operations in the expression. So the next topic will be loops. Sequential constructs execute the set of statements in sequential order and selection constructs execute certain set of statements only if a condition is met. Iterative statements allow a set of instructions to be executed repeatedly until a condition is met. Java provides three kinds of looping constructs, for loop, while loop, and do while loop. 
All free loops repeat the set of instructions as long as the underlying conditions remains true. The underlying condition is termed as a test condition. The test condition may be evaluated before the start of the loop or at the end of the loop. Accordingly, the loop is termed as an entry controlled loop or exit controlled loop, respectively. Both for loop and while loop are entry controlled loop, while the while is an exit control loop. For loop is used if you know how many times the loop will be executed and while and do while loop is used if you don't know how many times loops are executed. Hope you have understood the concept here. Coming on to the questions. Uh, if the test condition is evaluated at the beginning of the loop, it is termed as entry control loop. If you don't know how many times the loops are executed, then we will use while and do while. Java provides how many types of looping obstacles is three. The entry control loop in Java are for and while. Okay, coming on to the next concept, decision making. The decision control statements in Java are if and switch. Repetitive execution of a set of statements is termed as looping. The for loop and the while loop are entry control loops. A semicolon after the if condition is not a syntax error, but it terminates the if statement. Similarly, semicolon after the while condition is also not a syntax error. It means the loop terminates if the condition is false. A plus plus and are unary increment and decrement operator respectively. If the operand prefixes the increment or decrement operator, then according to precedence of operator, the operand is first checked for the condition and then incremented or decremented. If the operand postfixes the increment or decrement operator, then according to precedence of operator, the operand is first incremented or decremented and then checked for the condition. So the questions, what will be the condition if the value is a equal to 5, b equal to 7? If a is greater than b, system or order print like a. It will not give us syntax error, but it will execute the, program, the uh, statement after the if statement. Even though the if statement, we should not have a semicolon at the end. But to execute the next statement that is a SOP LNC print, you print the value as 5. What will be the for loop print? So again here you have semicolon at the end of the for loop which is not allowed, it is not the syntax. So here it will print the value of i as 6. What will be the following code print? Here there will be no output. The output will not happen here. A semicolon after this condition is it will what will happen is it will terminate the if statement. Coming on to the next topic, class. A class is a black box storing everything about a set of things, say a human, a teacher, a student, etc. Dot, dot, it stores the characteristics of properties or attributes as data members and functionalities as methods of functions. A class is declared using the keyword class. The members of a class can be private, public, protected, or default slash package. By default, the members of a class are of type default or package, which means they are accessible to only with a class and all classes in the same package. Binding together of data and members and functions of class is called encapsulation. Such encapsulation also ensures data abstraction, that is hiding of the inner complexity of the class from outer world. A class can also be inherited into another class, which is called inheritance. Coming on to the questions here, a class is declared by the keyword class or the small letters. Binding of data and function together is called abstraction. Is it abstraction? No answer is inheritance. One second, I'll just make a note. So the answer will be encapsulation but not abstraction. This is the right answer. I'm sorry for that. Uh, characteristics of a class are also called as data members and then a class binds together data and function uh, and then the default access specifier of the class is public. Hope you would have understood the entire logic. Uh, so, all the very best. Thank you.